House is in session, Canada's most popular political affairs program. No question, period. Coming up on the House, the people behind the politics of maternal health. You'd see women too caught to a bed. You'd see women lying uh, on the floor in labor or with their, their stomachs descended waiting to deliver their babies. Karina Roman on what the politicians in Ottawa may be missing. Order. Oral questions. Questions orales. L'honorable chef de l'opposition. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister keeps changing his story on maternal health and family planning at the forthcoming G8 summit. Well, it seemed like a good idea, a commitment to maternal and child health. The Prime Minister's signature initiative for the G8 was, at first, welcomed. But under closer scrutiny came the questions about family planning and access to abortion. And that's when a question of policy also became a question of politics, culminating in a perceived flip-flop on the Conservative side and from the opposition bench, a failed Liberal motion trying to force the issue. And as the CBC's Karina Roman discovered, there are many who worry that all the politicking on the Hill could ruin a good plan. The heartbeat of a four-month-old fetus in the womb. When she is born, she will have more than a 99% chance of living past her first birthday. In fact, she will have a life expectancy of nearly 83 years. In her first year of life, she will be immunized against tetanus, polio, measles, mumps, influenza, and other dangerous diseases. Her growth and development will be carefully monitored at regular so-called well baby checkups. All this simply because she is a baby born in Canada. Not so in many parts of the world. I could go into villages and say, you know, how many people have had a child under five die this year? And you'd see, you know, in a group of maybe 50 women, 10 are holding up their hand. And that's not the way it should be. Teresa Chiesa works with Care Canada as the program manager for Africa and health advisor on issues such as maternal health, HIV and reproductive health. She has worked in Tanzania, Sierra Leone, Ethiopia and Zambia. She remembers her first experience in Africa seven years ago. My office being based in Dar es Salaam was on top of the maternity ward in the hospital. And in Africa you do not hear women screech unless there has been a death. And it was very unsettling many a times to hear these sounds and the wailing emanate through the roof tiles up to your office and the whole unit would just stop because you knew that the mother or the child would have died. These are the realities of maternal and child health in the developing world. Improving that reality by 2015 is one of the United Nations Millennium Development Goals. But out of the eight UN goals, maternal health is the one the world has made the least amount of progress on. So when Canada, the host of the G8 this year, announced that improving the health of mothers and children would be the top initiative, there was widespread support until opposition MPs started asking questions about the details of Canada's plan and the government appeared ready to exclude family planning from it. Well, the abortion issue, we were always aware, could be a bit of a controversial one, but we did not think family planning would be, and we were quite surprised. Dennis Howlett is the national coordinator of the Make Poverty History campaign. He helped spearhead the lobbying of the government to take up the maternal and child health mantle. Howlett theorizes that confusion over the definition of family planning by both government ministers and opposition MPs could be the root of the problem. Because family planning does not include abortion, and Canada has long supported family planning policies at home and abroad. But while confusion may have started the debate, the politics of this particular parliament has kept it going. The opposition sees an opportunity to flesh out what they argue is a right-wing hidden agenda of the Conservatives, and Howlett suspects the Conservatives are trying to appease their base. Maternal health advocates are concerned all the rhetoric is drowning out the real issues. I would love to take some parliamentarians or some leaders to the largest public hospital in Uganda, in Kampala, to the largest public hospital in Bangladesh, in Dhaka, to see the women lying on the floor in the hallways, giving birth 
or recovering from an eclamptic seizure while their families are out trying to find gloves or drugs with whatever money they've managed to rustle up uh, so that in fact this woman can receive the care that she needs. Dr. Dorothy Shaw is an obstetrician gynecologist who teaches at the University of British Columbia. She is also the Canadian spokesperson for the Partnership for Maternal Newborn and Child Health, which is made up of 300 groups, agencies and countries. Shaw says family planning is key to helping women space apart the birth of their children so that both moms and babies are healthier. She says it's a fact that family planning saves lives. But Shaw argues that just focusing on contraception or getting into the controversies around abortion is losing sight of the bigger picture. Developing countries need more and better trained health professionals, proper equipment, good medicines and immunization programs if they are to build their own sustainable health systems. Last year, Dr. Keith Martin, a Liberal MP, headed up a group of parliamentarians from around the world that hammered out a document for the G8 on maternal and child health. Martin is worried that politics, even those played by his own party, will impede progress on a very serious problem. I think there's a danger that it could happen. If the abortion issue poisons the well so that we don't get this issue moved forward, that would be a catastrophe because uh, as the host this year, we have a moment in time when we can actually implement things that will have the most profound impact upon the lives of uh, the poor that we've ever seen in decades. Dennis Howlett says other countries are shaking their heads right now to see a developed nation like Canada debating something as widely accepted as family planning. But he says he's confident that once at the table, there will be enough peer pressure on Canada from the other G8 countries to make family planning a part of the initiative. Howlett is more worried about something that parliamentarians haven't debated at all. Well, the bigger embarrassment could actually be the scale of what Canada's prepared to commit in terms of funds. Uh, we know that the British and American and uh, other European governments are prepared to actually put in substantial amounts of money. And it would look really bad if Canada isn't able to at least match proportionally their contribution to what other countries are prepared to give. The government has frozen Canada's aid budget after next year. And Canada has large commitments already in Haiti and Afghanistan. So Howlett's not sure where money for a long-term initiative on maternal and child health will come from. So the baby's going to start, he's going to come down like this, and then he's going to turn, and he's going to make the next little descent to get his head through. Anxious parents-to-be learn the ABCs of labour and delivery at a weekly prenatal class in Ottawa. Access to that kind of education, not to mention proper medical care and family planning, is something that Canadians take for granted. For poorer countries to move even one step closer to what we have here, experts say our leaders have to stop trying to score points and start focusing on what the ultimate goal is for the people actually living the problems that the politicians say they want to solve. Teresa Chiesa got a glimpse of what that outcome can look like. While in Africa, she ran a mobile health monitoring clinic for local mothers and children. Pandemonium. There's kids screaming and running around and the mothers are chatting. And this is what it's supposed to be about. It's not supposed to be about the death and the destruction that we see. It's supposed to be children running around playing. And life is, is good and mothers are, you know, happy and they, they look at their children and they, this smile comes on their face and, and all is good for a few moments, you know, or, or an hour or however long it is. That heartbeat in the womb became a baby girl born December 2008. She is now 15 months old and like many Canadian born babies has every opportunity and chance to live a long and happy life. Those who champion maternal and child health in the developing world hope Canada's leaders will put aside their politics so that children everywhere can hope to have the same chance. For the house, I'm Karina Roman in Ottawa. So there you go. Real life. Is there real life on Parliament Hill? You wouldn't know by the week that was. The difficulties with the politics of the maternal health issue plagued both the Conservatives and the Liberals. It was all politics, but the trouble didn't begin or end there. <laughs> And that's the show. If you were looking...